If you're looking to set up a player controlled orbit around a target, this is the video for you. We're gonna be using Cinemachine 3, the new one, to have our camera orbit this ball in this mini golf micro game. If we tap our finger or click and move our mouse on the screen. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Ooh, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become a reality by helping you have good feeling cameras. Having a good feeling camera is a very important aspect of any game. It can really make or break the player experience, so spending time on this is very important. Luckily with Unity Cinemachine, it's a very robust set of tools to allow us to focus on how we want that camera to feel, not how do we implement that feeling. There's really only four main components that we need to achieve this effect. We need the Cinemachine brain attached to our main camera. We need a Cinemachine camera. If you used old versions of Cinemachine, this used to be called the virtual camera. We need the Cinemachine orbital follow. This used to be called the orbital transposer and the Cinemachine axis controller. That also means that there's minimal code that we have to write to achieve this effect. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at specifically how do we implement this effect. If you're interested in a more broad, how does Cinemachine orbital follow work and what are all the things we can do there, let me know in the comments and I can take a look at making that video. I wanted to focus this one on how do we make this effect? And if you wanna make the same effect, this is how you do it. And you can do it in a very short time. Let's go. There's three main components we need, plus the Cinemachine brain, which is attached to our real camera. On a different game object than your main camera, we need to attach the Cinemachine camera. That will automatically add some of the other components that we're gonna talk about as we configure it. This component is where we configure how should this camera be focused on a particular target. We've got our ball assigned as the tracking target and procedural components, we set up how will we follow it for both position and rotation. We're gonna to wanna to use the orbital follow for rotation control. I highly encourage you to use the hard look at if you're using a ball. A lot of the other options, you can end up with some weird scenarios going on. And those are really the only important aspects of the camera if you have a simple scene like this with just a single camera. In Cinemachine 3, we have a much more normal interaction with these components where we can see the mono behaviors on our object. So we can come down to Cinemachine Orbital Follow to set up all of the configurations here. Again, I don't wanna go through every single possible option that becomes a very large video. So we're gonna go through this like you wanna have the same type of interaction that I've implemented here. Pick binding mode, lock to target on assign. This feels the most natural for me at least, and it locks the camera's orientation on the first frame the camera is activated. This allows the other controls to work more fluidly, in my opinion, at least for this effect. And if you choose some other ones, you can get some wonky behavior, especially while the ball is rolling. Damping is how we smooth out our movement. So you'll see there's gonna be a slight delay where the ball comes a little off center and we can really exacerbate that with a higher position damping. Where low values like 0.1 are a more subtle, smooth follow instead of a hard look at or the more exacerbated smooth feeling of the high values. So I set up with 0.1 on all of those. You can see that rotation damping doesn't do a lot for us because we're configuring the rotation ourselves and we're not relying on the ball's rotation at all. We're gonna to wanna to use the sphere orbit style because we wanna go pretty consistently around this with the same viewport. There is another very interesting option, the three ring, which if we come in here, we can see how this is gonna work based on these configurations. The camera will try to move along one of these three rings depending on the height that it is. We have to adjust our vertical axis because right now I have it clamped to 1.5. So based on this config, we can see we can go up to five. So if we just change that, then as we move the mouse up and down, we can see how this camera would go between those three rings, which if you wanted to provide a zoom out functionality, that might make a lot of sense. And this cool gizmo in the scene, we can adjust this. Maybe this would make sense for you if you wanted to have like a zoom out capability and a zoom in capability. I am considering moving to this option just because larger levels, sometimes it's really beneficial if you can zoom out. But on the orbit style, I shipped it with a sphere with a radius of three. So we can see this radius here of three. The higher you go, the more zoomed out you get. And it's clamped based on your target offset. As we lower that, it changes our perspective. And we can, of course, also adjust the vertical axis to adjust that tilting as well. Let me reset all this. We'll also see that we have this warning here about orbital follow has no input access controller behavior. 
That's the next component we're going to take a look at. We see Sin Machine Input Access Controller is here. And as we click or tap to move, you'll see that gets enabled. And the input value is basically how fast we're turning. We can configure the sensitivity by adjusting the gain. So the default value of one is pretty slow to move. So I ended up settling on a value of five. This could also be a player configuration as well. I just don't happen to have any options for configuration in this game. And you'll also see whenever we let go of the mouse or tap, this becomes disabled. That's why we're getting that warning over here is it doesn't see that we have an active Sin Machine input access controller working because in cases where we're like grabbing the ball, I didn't want the Sin Machine input access controller to move because the players lined up whatever they're going for and they want to make their shot, right? So it's weird if you are trying to set up the power and it's moving around because you're on a phone and you're trying to do mobile touch and it's just a horrible experience. So in my code, there's actually two lines of code that we have here that are very important. I've got my player controller that has a reference to our rotation input provider and using the enhanced touch API, whenever we have finger down or finger up, let's take a look at that. Whenever the finger is placed, we see if we raycast and hit the ball. If we did not hit the ball, we're enabling the rotation input provider. If we did hit the ball, then we're not going to do that. And we're going to do some other stuff. We don't need to do anything on finger move because the rotation input provider that Sin Machine Input Access Controller is handling pumping those values into the orbital follow. So on finger up, anytime you release, we're just going to disable that input provider again. That's the only code we had to write to handle the input. I think that's pretty awesome. If we leave the Sin Machine orbital follow open, as we touch or tap and move back and forth, we can see that horizontal axis is moving, and that's really the only change that we're making. We're just adjusting the horizontal axis based on the player's input. If we tap the ball and drag, we cannot go left and right, so we can accurately aim wherever we pointed, let go and miss the hole. Make your little adjustment and try again. Pretty straightforward, simple, and that's one of the reasons I really like Sin Machine. We don't have to focus too much on how do we implement this thing. We can just configure some stuff that you need already made for us and get really good feeling cameras. If you got value out of this video, leave me a like, subscribe. And if you want to show your support directly, you can do things like get yourself some Mom Academy merch, use the affiliate links in the description. Black Friday is coming up. That helps a ton or become a YouTube member or Patreon supporter. At the tremendous tier, there's Nick5454. Starting at the awesome tier, you'll get a shout out like Ivan, Iphiobolus, Mustafa, Sneddon, Angel, and Pixel Wizards. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I'm so incredibly grateful.